to me and you on at the corner of 30th and Classen in uh, late 2002, huh, Bradley? Yeah. And we're we're driving around. What what do you call that? Pho Kong Vietnamese noodle bar here. And um, the significance of this is, isn't that we're stopping to get lunch. We're we're driving through what used to be the Long John Silver's where I worked for uh, over 11 years. I, it was, I didn't exclusively work at this one, but mostly at this one. My brother worked here. My brother Marty worked here. And in my... In the summer of my 16th year, he was able to get me a job because he had a job here. And they said, hey, uh, they needed someone. And so my brother recommended me. And I came up and this was one of the only jobs really I ever had. It was this job and working with my my dad and with my brothers. That um, and, I, and I worked here from the time I was 16 till the time I was probably, you know, 28 or 29. And I was a fry cook. And, and, and I must admit, I, I truly loved working here. I mean, I never thought it was going to be the only thing that I ever did. Not that I was above it, but I always enjoyed just the freedom that these sorts of jobs, and I say these sorts of jobs, meaning that all types of sort of uh, manual, you know, manual labor doesn't require a lot of your thought sort of jobs afford you and I could I remember being in there and thinking about being in a band and writing songs and all this sort of stuff but it really I just I really enjoyed working with all these ridiculous people that would come in and out of of uh, fast food restaurants and um, I pulled up here so you could sort of see this little this little corner store over there and in in it's sort of uh, it's in in the way that it's positioned with what used to be Long John Silver's here because I think one of the turning points of working at Long John Silver's was one night, I think it was just about a year and a half after I started working here, there was a lot of robberies going on all around the city. But there was a famous robbery of a, of a sirloin stockade where six people were put into a freezer and they were shot. So these, these things always are in people's minds when there's a series of these going on. And if you work at a restaurant, you probably pay a little bit more attention to the news when something like that's happening. Where well, there had been a lot of robberies in the area and people had gotten killed. So you're always on these alerts. So a guy had gotten killed at this uh, little cigarette shop right over there just a couple of months before. I mean, he, they were open probably till 2 in the morning, and it was a family, and the father got killed. And so here we are, you know, in this little community. So one night we're working, and all of a sudden I look up, and there, there are these three black guys with big guns bursting in through the door in the kitchen. And... Um, Virtually no customers in there. Maybe there's one customer sitting out in the in the dining area. But they burst in, and they are pissed off. And I'm white, and they're black, and I don't mean anything by that. I'm just saying I was 17, and from the way, from my standpoint, it looked very bad for me because I was the only white man working that night. I think all the other employees were black women, and there was one white um, assistant manager. And they burst in, and they had big, big guns. And they were sweaty, and they were pissed off, and they were in a hurry. And it was all, motherfucker, motherfucker, motherfucker. And I remember laying on the ground. I said, we're on the floor, motherfuckers. I'll blow your motherfucking head off. And, you know, and everything was, they were pissed off, and they wanted money. And I just, I just thought, my God, this is really, this is really how you die. It's just one minute you're just cooking up someone's order of french fries, and the next minute you're laying on the floor, and they blow your brains out, and it, there's no... There's no music. There's no significance. It's just, it's just random. It could have been anybody. And um, I laid on the ground, and I remember them saying, "Open up the motherfucking safe! I'll fucking kill you!" And this poor, this poor woman that was working. I mean, luckily she got it open. And I remember laying, laying on the floor, thinking, if they shoot her, I mean, and this is how far down into the in, into the sure, how sure we were that we were we were doomed. In my mind, I remember laying on the floor thinking if they shoot her, because she was like just around the corner, that I wouldn't just lay on the ground and wait my turn. I mean, that's easy to say because, of the, you know, I, luckily I didn't have to. But I thought if they shoot her, I'm going to grab a knife and I'm just going to start running and cutting whatever's in my way. And maybe the bullet will hit me in the arm or the leg. You know, you, you start thinking of a way out. And uh, 
She opened the safe and they got the money and they fucking ran out. And we were all still laying on the floor for moments after they left, wondering, like, is it over? And are they done? Are they going to come back or whatever? 